the place to escape from the concrete jungle. In northwestern part of Sichuan province, the landscape is shaped by huge mountains and deep valleys. The place is bursting with natural wonders and old ways of life. Let's get back in touch with nature again with Travelogue. I'm Liu Changying. Often called a heaven kingdom, Sichuan is known throughout China for its fertile land and leisure-oriented lifestyle. In the northern part of the province, knife-like rivers cut through surging mountains, creating amazing views. In amongst the spectacular scenery are some undisturbed corners where nature has really gone wild. Now of all the attractions in Sichuan, we've chosen to start our trip in the Huanglong area. The place has both natural and historic value and regular flights connect it with a number of big cities such as Chengdu and Chongqing. From Huanglong, we then go further down the Mingjiang River to visit the giant panda center in Wolong. After that, it's up to a small village with a big architectural reputation. Nature reserve. Everything here is clear. The air is clear, the water is clear, and the reason I'm here is clear. The Huanglong Park sprouts over 700 square kilometers and is surrounded by damp forests, mountains, coniferous woods, and grasslands. About 65% of the site is forested with much of the remainder being above the tree line. Without a doubt, the region's big attraction is its karst formations, which surface in the form of limestone poles, shawls, and travertine falls. Maybe one of the reasons for this place to be named as a yellow dragon is because all those formations, they're just like scales on the back of a gigantic yellow dragon. The water is crystal clear and contains all kinds of minerals drawn out of the limestone mountain behind. Each small pool displays a heartbreakingly beautiful color that would defy any painter's palette. Yeah,你看一个金瓜形成了一百多五百年到十万年才能形成。真的啊。哦,那它那种小的那种。第一把是的是怎么形成的呢?这个第一把形成了因为是商业的这个水啊是因为是雪山中水。它在下流的过程当
view here is breathtaking. It also takes my breath away. All in all, the view along the road is rewarding enough to carry you to the very top. Once you get there, you find yourself at the so-called Five Color Pond, the Eye of the Yellow Dragon. The calcium deposits are a sharp golden contrast to the clear yet mysteriously colorful water. It's hard to describe the water. The surface rippled in baby blues and lush greens. Its nature run riot with color and it all changes within a matter of meters from one pool to another. The place is so dazzlingly unreal that people imagine it be where goddesses come to bath. But don't be too drawn in by its beauty. The weather in the area is so unpredictable. It can change at any minute. We were lucky to escape from a sudden summer storm. About two hours drive from the Yellow Dragon is Monigo Valley. This is where the crowds thin out to almost nothing, and you enter a land that looks a lot like a prehistoric wilderness. It's a place of thunderous waterfalls and small miracles. You can hear the roar of the water long before you see it, and I can even feel some of the breeze now. In front of us is Jaga Pubu the biggest of its kind in China. Again, calcium cabinet is shaping the landscape. The Jaga Falls are 93 meters high, and in summertime, two to five cubic meters of water tumble over the edge each second. Jaga means white in the local Tibetan language. This is a travertine waterfall, meaning that behind the rushing water is a crust of limestone gradually growing calcium particle by calcium particle. Get up close and you will be drenched by the spray. The water is chilly and the breeze, stirred by the downward force, is both sweet and refreshing. The small pools and lakes hidden in the forests of Moanigo are no less impressive than the Jaga Falls but much more quiet. Each has its own elegance and poetic name. Many of the names of the lakes contain the word for mirror. Perfectly still pools reflect the quiet environment around. It's really a very secluded world and a place for meditation and reflection. The peacefulness and beauty of the green and blue have a soothing effect. All you could hear is the chirping of the birds and the gurgling of the water. And there's a very good chance that you will have it to yourself.
One of the lakes is called Er Dao Hai, and it is sacred to the local Tibetans. Each year around springtime, they come here to worship the lake. The Tibetans must have their own reasons, but I have no idea why they choose this one in particular. To me, all of the pools are equally beautiful. From Huanglong, we go all the way south. The landscape turns greener and gentler. Our next stop is the Wulong Nature Reserve, which is covered by virgin forest and bamboo woods. Hey, welcome to Wulong Giant Panda Center. I'm your guide today. Of course, it's me. Now you probably have seen a giant panda on the TV screen. In the movie, or even in the zoo, he is really an international star. Here in Wulong Giant Panda Center, you can get a real feel for why this black and white fellow is so special. Wulong Nature Reserve is China's largest giant panda protection zone. More than 100 giant pandas roam here in the wild. And the center takes care of 70 more, accounting for half of the world's captive giant panda population. The average lifespan of the giant panda is 25 years, and at the age of five, a giant panda is considered an adult. It's an incredibly rare chance to see so many of the animals in the same place at the same time. If you pay a visit in the early morning or late in the afternoon, you will discover that these fluffy creatures are not as reluctant to move as their reputation would have you believe. It's true that they are on heat only a few days a year, and it's true that they do seem to love a nap. But they can also be as playful and active as their lumbering bodies allow. <laughs> 